Three, two, one. It's awesome music, right? Right? You like you like the music to start off. Today, on the episode of Big Data Big Questions, we are doing another interview in our interview series. Today, I have a very special guest who is not only an amazing person and an amazing guest for the Big Data Big Question show, but she's also a dear friend. So Erin Banks, you've probably seen a couple of videos we did with the, check it out, wore the shirt, huh? Big Data Beard, is that coming in? There it is. Big Data Beard podcast. We also did the machine learning course on the Big Data Beard channel, um, YouTube. So interesting there. I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes here. She also has her own uh, site, but she's gonna be on today to talk about her journey into marketing. And really, hey, if you're looking for a career option within IT development or even big data, because that's how I met her. She was actually in marketing uh, when I first met her, but she has a long technical background too that she's gonna go through in this course. Um, or in this interview course, I don't remember what's on my course here. Maybe because I was thinking about Andrew Ning's machine learning course. But today, I'm excited to kick off that interview. So please tune in and let's watch the interview with Aaron Banks. Three, two, one. Hi, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Big Data, Big Questions. I'm excited to jump into this interview and talk to Aaron Banks. Aaron, say hello to the Big Data, Big Questions community. Hello, community. How's it going? Man, it's been a long time, Aaron, since I'm, we've talked. I know um, for anybody that's watching, I'm not sure if you uh, remember, but with the Big Data, Big Beard, or was it Big Data Beards? What was just there? big data, just one Big Data Beard. I think of Big Data, Big Questions. So Big Data yeah, Beards. So on the Big Data Beard team, we went through, what was it, the machine learning course. Um, and so we Did. spent a lot of time on some, uh, on YouTube there, but this is the first time being on the Big Data, Big Questions show. So thanks. Well, thank you for inviting me. I feel honored. I know, well, we've got some hard hitting questions here. So, uh, <laughs> Tell me, t tell me how excited you are afterwards. No, <laughs> but no. Um, so today we have you on, and you've been gracious enough to give us the time to talk about specifically. You and I work together, and I know you were involved uh, and, and helped me out a lot. Uh, you know, when we were working together, I know you were you were responsible for our AI and analytics messaging for a long time. But today we're here to talk about product marketing director, um, specifically around. I know you've always worked in tech. Yeah. Um, from that perspective. So I, I'd love to have your take because we get a lot of questions around that. So I think that's where we're going to, where we're going to start. But before then, how about you give us a little bit of background? Um, tell us, you know, how, how you got into it and Ooh. What, what, what you've been doing. Oh, it seems like so long ago. I'm really starting to feel kind of old, but, uh, <laughs> anyways, I have a electrical engineering degree, so I have a technical mm -hmm. background and I will admit, though, that when I was going through college, um, IT wasn't really, you know, a big thing, you know, in the sense that only one out of like 20 people, even I would say more than that, had like a computer at their desk. Like I remember my first computer, right? And everyone remembers their first computer, but I remember it because a lot of people did not have the computer. I was kind of the only one who had a computer at school. So that was pretty long ago. But it also was kind of like interesting. It was a different time. So when I came out of college, you know, it was an engineering degree. So I automatically went to the technical companies. And I remember interviewing with Sun. Um, and I remember interviewing, tend to always end up with these like technical type companies. So right out of college, I ended up at this company called Bay Networks. And I was doing tech support because I knew that I liked working with people. Like I liked, I liked chatting with people. And the one thing that I really got out of my degree is that it just helped me think. And without a doubt, like I can do a little bit of like electrical stuff, but I can't do any of it now. Right. I mean, and I, I, I feel like that's how it is for most people, but I just like to solve problems and find different ways of getting to, you know, the end point. So that's how I ended up in tech support. Uh, if anyone knows anything about Bay Networks, it's no longer existent. It got bought by Nortel and then became Nortel Networks. And that's not really, it's pretty sad what happened there. Um, huge financial problem. But either way, I was driving to the mall in Bedford, Massachusetts, and RSA, the security company, was having a um, open house event. And I applied and I got a job 
doing tech support for security, but I ended up doing, having a customer meeting. And at that time, it's when EMC had acquired RSA and I went to a customer meeting. It was a federal customer. And I just kind of like shot the shit with one of these other sales reps. And one of them was from Ohio. And that's where I'm originally from. And a couple of weeks later, I get an email from a sales rep that was like, Hey, listen, we're looking for someone with some security experience. Uh, would you like to kind of come to be in SC? over with an EMC. And it was hard because I'd only been at RSA for like six months. Um, and it's hard to go into your manager's office and be like, hey, you just hired me. And I was like, thinking, <laughs> I'm going to leave. But I realized yeah. like when you're in tech support, it's a thankless job. Like nobody cares about you. Like everyone mm -hmm. just yells at you. So this was an opportunity to get out of anger. So I've done tech support. I've been in SC in the field. Uh, you, done... for, for folks who may not know, can you explain um, SC Ooh, a little bit? Yes. So great. Thank you for reminding me of that. So there's a couple of ways that people like define an SE, like a systems en engineer or a sales engineer, but for like tech companies, there's always a sales rep and technically the salesperson isn't supposed to know like the technical ins and outs of the products that they're trying to sell. So whether that's hardware or software or service overall, there is sometimes an SE that's assigned to sales rep or sales reps, like in an area for customers or something like that. And they provide all the technical insight and information and kind of spec out what they sh the customers should be buying, things like that based on their needs. No, that's a good description. And like I said, I know I know for me, until I became an SE, I didn't even know what an SE was, right? I so, agree. So, uh, you know, uh, I think it's I think it's kind of good. And it's interesting. Well, I, I, we could do a whole show around SEs. And I think, I think maybe I think maybe we maybe we should. But um, I. I it, it, it's still a technical role. It's, it's very interesting it's, it, and it's hard, but that's awesome. So six months in and it's yeah. like, hey, you, we went to one customer meeting and they're like, we've got to have, we've got to have Aaron Banks on the team. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it, what I've kind of have found is, um, especially from a sales and even an SE perspective, a lot of it is a personality and kind of, it's interesting to go back. I had no idea what being an SE was either, but the reason why I said son when I was talking about the interviewing is because that's what I was interviewing for, but I had no idea right. what it was. Okay. And all that basically it said was you're going to go out with a sales rep and sell things. Now coming out of college, I was like, I'm not comfortable doing that yet. Like I, I did co-ops, but my right. co-ops were like soldering, you know, chips on a board, <laughs> you know? So I did not, you know, have that experience of being in front of the customers and doing it. So I initially thought, well, listen, I'll do tech support first because then I can get comfortable talking with people, especially when they're angry at you. You know, I'll never forget it was, you know, this time 20 some years ago and LL Bean's on the phone and they're having an outage. Now, LL oh, Bean wow. doesn't an outage during the holiday season. You know, you know, usually these retail companies shut down their IT from, you know, November on so that they can deal with all of the online sales and everything. So that was pretty tough. From Ella Bean. So I really think that it helped me, you know, have conversations with people, talk to people while you're troubleshooting, you know, like random things, like having like small talk um, and just kind of creating a little bit of confidence in me to just talk with people, and especially during hard times. So going to be an SC afterwards where someone's yelling at you face to face and telling you that you suck, you're kind of like, yeah, I got this. You know what I mean? Like I can do that. He's not going to yell at me anymore. Like I don't have to troubleshoot it. I could tell him the call like 1-800 Nortel, you know, so it was great. Um, so I just thought it was like just perfect. And, and I was just like, why not? And I, what I have found as I've now grown in my career is that people will be like, Hey, why don't you join my team? Or why don't you do that? I'm like, why not? I'm like, okay. Like I've got, really got nothing to lose at this point. Um, if you're going to pay me my salary, uh, you have great benefits, right? You're giving me money so that I can retire uh, down the road and things along those lines, then I'll take it. Like, I'll try it. And, and even like talk about not knowing anything. So when I, initially when I came over to EMC, um, as you may or may not know, EMC had acquired a virtualization company and they were, they had owned it, but I didn't know anything about it. And that's how like new into like IT I was in the sense of like, I wasn't even an expert in storage or, you know, the documentum at the time or anything like that. I was just saying, yeah, I can learn it. You know, I do, I did network management at Bay Networks and I did security. So I continued to do security, you know, from the RSA side things into these EMC customers. But I just was like, I'll just try it out. 
So then once again, I'm at a customer, Lockheed Martin, and there's this new group called V Specialists that had started with, a, with an EMC. And the goal was that if a customer was going to do virtualization, we wanted them to do it on EMC technology. No idea what virtualization was, but I was like, I'll apply for that job. Like, I'll try it. Um, the irony of it, of it is the guy who didn't hire me is now my boss. And still to this day, <laughs> I like, I was like, so you felt bad about not hiring me, right? You realize you were wrong. I did get hired on the team eventually because I think what people knew about me is that like, I could be in front of a customer. I could have a conversation. I could respectfully be like, Hey, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to get it for you. And I'll never forget right. that was how I got hired into Bay networks. Cause I was like, I don't know the answer to that. You know, I didn't know networking at the time, but I said, I don't know it, but I'll find out. Always those key kind of things, like just random things that even to this day, people are like, that's why I hired you. Cause you said that. So I just tried them, even though, you know, they always say, especially for women, they're always like, we always kind of like hold ourselves back and say like, don't do it. Cause you don't know the experience. I, I would say that I was just blessed. Cause sometimes people would just come to me and say, Hey, why don't you apply for this job and try out and see what you can do. And I've done that. So I did the SE, I did tech marketing. Okay. So how did you, that's, that, that's an interesting <laughs> kind of segue, right? Like, uh, I, I think it's really interesting because, and I've known you for a long time. I don't think I know the story. Uh, how, how did you go from, how did you go from what, it, I mean, what, what we would, what we would say typically is a technical role into, and, and I want to find out your thoughts around how technical marketing is, but all right. So been doing tech and there may be people out there in the audience that are watching this saying, Hey, you know, I've kind of been doing tech for a little while. I'd like to maybe try into marketing because I have some ideas or yeah. I like the creative. So how, yeah. how did you switch? Like what, where, 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 what's that gap where it's like, you know what, I'm going to go in this direction towards marketing. Yeah. So I would say like a couple of things. Um, one is I had that technical background and I could be creative. So one of the things that we did as a V specialist with an EMC is we didn't have a marketing organization and it was like, Hey, you would get slides from VMware and you'd get trained on VMware stuff and then you get trained on EMC stuff, but you wouldn't have kind of like that story that would kind of come together. Technically, um, there wasn't, again, a specific group that would focus on it as a larger part. So I ended up putting, and most of us within the V specialists ended up putting our own PowerPoints together. But what we also did, and Chad did an amazing job when he hired all of us into his tribe was basically using people that could be social. At right. that time, again, early, Twitter. I remember getting my first Twitter account. I was not even a V specialist yet. I was trying to be hired into it. And Twitter had just started because I remember it was going to like <laughs> different names. And they're like, you should get a Twitter account. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you should get a blog. I don't know what you're talking about. And I still like little, it's so funny now that we're walking down memory lane, like the member of the conversations where you were when you had them, when you're like, you should do that. And how little things like that have just helped in the career. I don't know if they help as much now. I'll be honest. I know you and I talk about this all the time about like whether certifications are really worth it, right? And whether what are the important things now of what people are looking for? And obviously people are different, but I will, I think that no matter what, if you have some sort of like ability to have a conversation with people, you don't even have to have confidence because most people fake their confidence. And we know that for a fact, right? Fake yeah. it. So you can make it, I guess, is the phrase, right? But I think the idea is, um, is trying different things and just going out there and just, you have to be willing to kind of take that risk. So I didn't always, I never, I don't have a five-year plan. I'm pretty sure you probably have a five-year plan because you're so good like that, but I, tried, I don't have one. I tried three, I, I, I've been doing three years at a time three. just because I still have to have that kind of, I don't want to say instant gratification, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. hard. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it's, it's hard to, to or at least for me, to conceptualize where it's like, man, you know, sometimes you look at it and it's like, like if you're going to run a marathon, and but maybe you want to just break it into like five miles at a time, right? Yeah, the but I think thing. that's, oh, marathon training is the worst. But what I think is really interesting and what I think I found out a lot now being, you know, in this pandemic and being home and some things that have happened in both of our lives this year is kind of like what, I realize is it's not always been about this job or a title or whatever, but the idea of like, <clears throat> what kind of life do you want to have in three years? Right. So in, in three years, um, 
you know, do you want to be retired and, or you want to have a second home or you just really, really want to be busy and trying something new and learning and, and whatever. And that's the way that I'm trying to like phrase it now. Like where am I, what's my next step and what am I going to do? Like I said, it's always been this kind of thing of like, let's just try something new. So that's helped me. But now I realize, is it always wanting to be on a plane, right? Um, when I not was right at, now. Yeah, no, not right now. <laughs> we kind of don't have that option right now. <laughs> that's true. So. Although I've heard some companies are, you know, luckily I feel like we're lucky because they're keeping us home, but some companies aren't doing that. Yeah. But I think like, um, there's just that, again, that idea of like, what is it that I'm looking to do? But when I was at VMware, I was gone every week that I had to give my dog to my sister so that she could watch my dog. Like yeah. my dog forgot it's, who I was for three years. So was that, was, was that when you were in marketing? Oh my God. I know. I feel like I'm bouncing around and I haven't like, <laughs> it's okay. Thank you for bringing me back on track. <laughs> uh, no. So I went, so I was at EMC. It was a V specialist that, that yeah. team was getting disbanded. So we need to look for another job. So I took a job at VMware being an SE doing security oh, at okay. that time. They Sticking just, with security for a while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they just acquired like, or they were acquiring Nasira for the NSX. So that was very, very early on things. So oh, can I, yeah. I got a question. Let me, this is something that just kind of just stuck out to me. So a lot of folks that I interview and I've talked to, or that I'm just friends with, if, the, if they're, if, if they come from a networking background, a lot of times they do specialize in security. Why is that? Like you, you worked at Bay Networks and you said that, yeah. you know, working, working from that perspective, went to RSA, did the V specialist, but then went back to security. So is there something inherent, you know, with networking and I'm not a networking person. So I'm just, now I'm just curious. You know, I never really like thought about it, but I definitely see that there could be like that link, right? They go hand in hand, right? I mean, you're literally trying to just protect the data that's traversing the network, right? So what is there and how quickly you can get it and getting from point to point, right? We talked about this the other day of like different breaches that have happened mm -hmm. and the idea of like sitting there and watching the network because they're looking for things that are on the network. And as a security person, we'll put things like honeypots on networks to kind of bring in the hackers so that you can really help understand who they are, define kind of like their way of breaching organizations, what they're doing, and hopefully trying to find out what they're looking for, even if it's like fake information or whatever. So they go hand in hand because you're protecting the data that's on the network and they're getting on your network to get the data, right? They, if, if there was no network, they couldn't steal anything other than going directly, you know, physically to it. So I never really looked at they were kind of connected, but they definitely seemed to kind of be along those lines and definitely, um, you know, that's interesting, but yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm seeing a trend, maybe I'm not. I don't know, it's just- No, it, I definitely think that I talk there to is. people, it's- And I think like most, well, there are obviously some exceptions, but I worked, so I went to VMware, um, was an SE, and then I went to Juniper and did tech marketing. And that was from the networking side of things, doing security. Oh, so to your point, security. Yeah. Networking company <laughs> doing security for virtualization. So open networking kind of capabilities, software defined networking, uh, Juniper had Contrail. So definitely doing kind of those things. And I, I feel like we're still kind of stuck in it. I will admit um, having that security feel a uh, little bit of knowledge. And again, I love security because you really, really have to think it through. Um, it can be really frustrating because again, it's a thankless job. You're never going to be hundred percent secure. There's always going to be breaches. And I love having security debates. I think you and I have had them before of like, yeah. you know, is it really that bad to be on the front page of a paper? And if you do a little numbers behind it, neither here nor there, not for this kind of show, but um, the idea again, I always created to go back to like the original question about how did I kind of end up in marketing from an SE is because we created our own presentations. Like, well, I remember one of my presentations was talking about how many integration points that we had from VMware into the EMC storage. And I related it to a hydrangea. Mm. So you can imagine standing like, and I did federal. So I remember being in Oklahoma and, and I'm sitting in the front of the room and I was like, so does anybody know what kind of flower this is? And everyone's head that was down was immediately like, we're talking about a flower in a presentation, you know? <laughs> so I, I think people just kind of like noticed that I had, I just try to look for different ways of doing stuff. I like being different than anybody else. 
or doing things differently. I don't want to say everyone else, but I feel like that may be an advantage that I have of not having like a marketing background in a marketing organization. Yeah, because you can definitely tell whenever you present. Um, you, I, I, I think you're one of the best presenters. And I mean, oh. that's funny that that's funny that you said that about the uh, flower. So it, it, it sounds to me like so you always kind of created your own content. And then you yeah. kind of saw saw that there was a gap there or yeah, it was like, hey, trying you know, to create I've like analogies, right? Because you think tech support, I have to expl constantly explain to somebody how to do configurations on their router, right? Or their switches. So I did switching networking management. So you have to be able to verbalize it and kind of explain it to somebody, again, troubleshooting that. And then as an SE, I got down to the kind of point of having to do that face-to-face -face and having to explain it to them and also do it visually, right? And kind of, and I go visually like here, meaning a PowerPoint <laughs> or a whiteboard, right? So kind of those different ways of realizing if you keep repeating the same thing over and over again, you've seen it like in executive briefing centers, they just get tired and all vendors do it the same. So I've always tried to find different ways and I've, I've been blessed. People remember my presentations, right? Like, hey, look at this flower. Yeah. I mean. They're like, you're that flower person. I was like, <laughs> I am, I am. I don't remember what I said, but I do remember that was a flower, right? Cause hydrangeas change their colors depending on the amount of acid. And I was just relating it to integration points to the uh, pH level of a soil. It really is a weird kind of analogy, but it got people's attentions and they always remembered it. Yeah, I've seen you call out people that aren't paying attention in uh, presentations too. I, well, yellow I, shirt guy, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do, and I think that kind of also helps of having some sort of like personality. And yeah, I mean, it killed. He he never he he never stopped paying attention, and everybody else just kept laughing. I mean, you know, yeah. I thought it was and it great. just becomes a joke, right? Because I I. Oh, if anyone said that like I hurt their feelings, like it would break my heart. Like I am not. Like I am hugs and love and smiles and everything but i love a good like laugh like in a good shtick right so if i'm sitting yeah. on a presentation and i mean it, i like now my joke is like i showered for you and it's funny like i used to make that joke of like <laughs> i showered today people like this is a big day and i would actually smell my armpit <laughs> the point that the guys that were doing the event in canada they were like uh some people came up to me and they're like um she she showered today like that's what they had to tell them i was like listen whatever whatever sticks in their brain Be that they remember right? it, yeah that's all that matters and that's why i was kind of drawn into like that marketing realm of doing things differently and i that's my that's my thing i want to do it differently i don't want to do it like everyone has done it like you're in so, marketing you've been doing it for 20 years you're going to keep doing it the same way and i just like to do it differently um with different videos and different kind of like graphics and different things along those lines, because we kind of get, especially nowadays with social media, I think we just, yeah. we see it so quickly and it goes by, you want to be memorable and you have to find out ways to do that. So, so kind of, kind of break it down a little bit more for the audience. What specifically does a product uh, marketing manager do, or how does, yeah. how does it, uh, so totally understanding on the slides and, and some of the other things, but what are some of the other things that, you know, if, if anybody's watching this and they're like, you know, this sounds, this sounds interesting. Like I create my own slides all the time, or I'm not the best developer, but I'm the one that always has to talk and present our findings to management or to our customer. Right. Maybe, you know, maybe this is something that they're looking for. Or like you said, everybody's got, you know, a three or a five year plan. Maybe it's right. something they're like, Hey, a couple more years of programming and maybe I'd like to take a little bit of time to do, you know, do, do some, do some more creative work, which programming can be creative and sometimes it can be just. Yeah. I, <laughs> I like, um, product man and uh, product marketing because a, it still keeps me close to the products, right? So you're working with the product management teams to understand the products, why they created it, um, how it works, what they're doing, you know, the use cases, and then you're working to then tell a story based on that, that will resonate with customers. So yes, PowerPoints are it, but what are the images that associate with it, right? When I look at this, like, again, here's a hydrangea. Again, not the analogy wasn't great, but the idea was like, here's something different that catches your eye, right? Here's a video, here's a different ways of amplifying this product and getting it in front of customers and getting to explain it. And I think that's also helped me in marketing because I was in the field. So I'll always be like, I don't like the BS, right? Like, I don't, I don't want to throw that in front of an SE. They're not, 
A, they don't, I know that they don't have the confidence to talk about it because they don't know that deck as well as I do. You and I talked about that a lot, right? Can that person that I'm creating the deck for give it? Some people can't give the deck that I make. Um, to, like someone to just have my own deck when I present to customers. But to answer your question, it's just being able to stay really close to the product, which I love. And then also being able to get close to a customers, because if you think about like events or conferences, right? Not just the booth duty, you have to do things like that. Yeah. But you can also do the videos, right? If you have like a launch, like at Mobile World Congress or something along those lines, uh, it's your product. So they want somebody that's going to be the creative or lively or something that tends to be more on the marketing side than on the product management side, right? Depends, not always the case. But, you know, you can get in front of that camera and you can have those conversations and you can talk to customers, right? They'll put you yeah. in the booth. They'll have you do those things. Um, so it just, it was just really, really like interesting. And I love telling, you know, a story, making it simple, making it easy. You know, I hate trashing my mom, but I just always said, if my mom can understand this. If I can explain it in the language, she can understand it, then I'm going to win because you always have to worry about your least common denominator and what, you know, what they understand being an SC really helps me with that. Yeah. You know, cause I realize how's that going to look, you know, and I remember working with other teams and be like, you can't present that. There's like all, it's all words, like try to present that. And that's what I would do to them. And it's like, let's go into a room and let's project that up in there. And why don't you, why don't you tell me that story? Right. And then they're always like looking at the board and you're like, excuse yeah. me, I'm the customer. You have to look at my eyes. Or they start reading it. I do it all the yeah. time. Too. And you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, so you're like, look, what's the word you want to pick out? What's the image? What's kind of like the idea behind it? What's the story you want to tell? Because they're not, no one, people will read the talk track, but then they make it into their story. So what's right. the idea behind it? And what are you trying to like focus on it overall? So there has, I mean, there, I, I know this from, from experience and just talking with folks, there, there are all kinds of different product, you know, product marketing managers and people that come from different areas, but yeah. with you, with you having so much technical, technical background, I mean, I, I feel like you're already saying that it's helped so much, but do you think that's a requirement? So if somebody's sitting out there and they're watching, they're like, Hey, you know what? Maybe they've got a technical degree or maybe they don't have a technical degree, but they're like, you know what? I like IT. And I, I do get this question on big data, big questions a lot. It's like, what are some of the roles that are, that are non-technical? So is it, is it okay, you know, for, for people that are non-technical to kind of get in, get, get into it? Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming that there may be more challenges. In, in yeah. Your and I definitely think that, so the answer is no, it, you okay. do not have to have a technical background to do that. And let's just also make it clear of let's just hope that there's people that are not already in jobs that are kind of listening to this is that the fact is like, it isn't like when I was growing up that you're like, I want to be an engineer. and want to be technical. Like even to try to get into the technical field, it's not like this was a huge passion for me. It's something that my dad forced me to get into. And when I say yeah. forced, like literally forced me, like, this is it. You're going to do engineering. And you pick <laughs> it. that was it. I think he said I could become like a doctor, but I was like, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I knew that I couldn't get into medical school. There's a lot of school in front of you in math. Uh. Yeah. And, and I knew I couldn't get in. I knew I couldn't get in. Um, because I, the one, the good, you know, it's on the rowing team, right? I wanted to get uh, the really great experience of college. So, so wait, you, you can't be on the rowing team and, and, and be working uh, towards medical degree. It was, <laughs> it was tough enough to be on the rowing team and in engineering and pass. Um, so luckily they don't really require GPAs anymore. But I think yeah. it's kind of like, you don't need it. And I will say every job that I've been in and manager that I, managers that I've had, and I've been in te technology since the beginning of my career, there's always people that don't have a technical background. Okay. You know, and, and again, one of the things that I've, I've realized is the number one thing that's most important and a lot of reason of why I jumped around is because of my network and the people that I met up with at social events still to this day, there was uh, Chris Hoff is his name Beaker on Twitter. And he was great and met up with him through a coworker. And we went to just like some social technical, like, I don't know what it was, uh, like a stand up kind of event. You know what I mean? It's at night. It was always like some business and a corporation comes in and you kind of like network. And still to this day, I, you know, use them as like, pinging okay. his mind about like what I should do and what's going on and things along those lines. And it was the network that's really helped me. He helped me get the job in Juniper, right? Where I pinged yeah. his brain and I was like, what should I do? Like, 
what's the next step? Like, what's the next path? You know, like, you know, automation, Kubernetes, like all of these things that weren't around, you know, earlier, you're like, Hey, here's next phase. I'd like to get involved with it. Uh, and then, you know, doing your own work, your own research, especially nowadays, you know, there's so much that's like on the web, so many online classes, so many, you know, all of the information that you provide, it's all out there. So having some sort of knowledge and willing to learn. And I think people love that if they can see your passion about something and that you're really excited about it and you want to know more and that you've helped yourself train, at least I know when I interview people, like, what have you done for yourself and how have you tried to educate yourself? You don't have to be an expert, but if you're willing to learn and I'm going to put my time and money in teaching you into something, and I know that you want to get something out of it and you're going to be excited about it, then I'm probably going to put my, you know, risk. I'm going to take that chance with you. Um, even if you don't have a technical background. And that's why, again, that networking is really, really important because right. a lot of it, you just, you know, if you know somebody, know somebody that can get you a job, it doesn't matter what your background is. If they can vouch for you and say that, you know, that they'll do a good job and things like that, it'll be huge. No, that's great. And, and, and I forgot that point until after I asked the question, you started answering it, but you know, you, you, you have hired folks from all kinds of different, different backgrounds. So uh, that's yeah. really great perspective there. And when you talk about networking, cause I know we started start talking about it's networking different. folks, she's talking about your, 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 your group, right? Yeah. <laughs> like your LinkedIn network, right? Again, <laughs> let's remember. Cause, early cause kind you of worked like, at Bar uh, not Barracuda. What was it? Um, uh, Bay, Bay Net Oh yeah. Bay network. networks. And you said Jupiter. And then <laughs> Juniper. Why do you always call it? It's not a planet. But because I, I think I, I think I call it Jupiter because of the. You notebooks. don't drink gin, maybe. No, it's the it's the notebooks. You know, for for deep learning and everything like that, you have Jupiter notebooks that you write. Um, Remember when we were going through Angelina's yes, course? It was yes. the Jupiter notebooks. That's so funny. Yeah. So you're right. It is. Um. Thank you for clarifying. Juniper. That one. Different <laughs> network. It's like your your uh social network. Yeah. Uh, who you kind of uh reach out to? Who you talk to? via Twitter, LinkedIn, meeting at social events, hopefully not now you're meeting at social events, but you know, things along those lines. Yeah. And I th you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool concepts around it. I, I, I'm big on LinkedIn. I think, you know, and that's, I've talked, I've talked about it a good bit on this, uh, on, on this channel here is that, you know, I think LinkedIn is a platform that you should be involved with, even if it's something as simple as like, in your own words, I'll just copy, you know, what, what, what your company says to send out, but you know, mm -hmm post interesting things that you're that that you're working on or maybe you know areas that you want to be so you know if you if you're doing web development now and you want to be in deep learn you know deep learning and machine learning start posting some machine learning things you know if you're you know if 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 you're interested in product marketing you know I, I, you know post you know post some interesting things that are going on at your organization and have an opinion on them you know i think linkedin is the perfect platform especially now we can't that we can't be you know face to face at uh, well i'm going to ask you a question so on that note like, I think one of the most important things that a lot of us are lacking is, is asking questions to another person. Now your whole channel is about, you know, big data, big questions. So it is technically asking the questions, but do you feel that somebody that comes to you and ask questions and maybe continuously ask questions gives you a different opinion of them? Like you would be maybe more willing to hire them if they didn't have a technical background because they're asking you and they're interested and they're passionate about something. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you look at it as the whole package, right? Like, you know, oh, these are the things like, and this is something. So not only just asking a question, but if you come to, you know, if, if you, you know how it is, like if you walk into an interview, yeah. I remember some of my first ones. And this is one of the reasons I started creating my blog. And I still think, why well, I still think it's valuable now. There's so many different, it doesn't have to be a blog, it can be GitHub. But to, to answer your question, like, yeah, if you've been involved in the community, you're like, hey, you know, I, I asked some questions here and I actually did a little side project on my own. Like yeah. you walk in, you're not walking in just with just with a resume, which do you still have to bring a physical resume? It's been so long since I've interviewed. I don't think so. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I haven't, <laughs> right, like, I haven't either. It's like one page, you know, it's got to be one page and everything like, but if you walk in and you say, hey, these are the things. And once again, that's that's another reason I really like LinkedIn is because you can actually go and if you have content or blogs or, you know, if you've done interviews, Yep. That are public, you can link them all on your LinkedIn. And so yeah, go through huge. the process. It it it's better than a resume, in my opinion. I but, agree. You know, and 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 that's what that's what if you know, if I'm helping, you know, I'm I'm helping or giving my opinion on folks that are coming in to apply for roles, those are things that I would look for. So yeah, I mean, definitely asking questions, but it's I feel like it's it's more than just asking the questions because it shows that it's somebody that's 
um, eager to learn and eager to be involved yeah. in a community, right? Um, right? Versus like, hey, you know, there's something I wanted to do, but you know, it's all the time. Like I, you know, talk to some of my friends and everything, and they're like, man, I, I want to do this, or you know, I'm 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 thinking about this, but I don't think I can. I'm like, well, have you have you tried reading a book on it or something? And this yeah. is this is non technical. I mean, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like I mean, like, have you read a book or watch ten YouTube videos just on that one topic? And you watch ten YouTube videos on on one specific topic, you'll know more. I won't say than most the most people on the planet, but I would say that it would put you in the top 70, 80 percent probably. Yeah. Especially for people that you know in that industry, like how many times? And I mean, I'm guilty of this too. You know, there's there there's there's areas that I probably could do better, right, and, and learn something on. But anytime I anytime something comes up and I'm like, all right, I need to learn more about you know could be Elasticsearch or something like that. I'm like, all right, let me go watch ten videos, find the top ten videos on YouTube, and you know watch them. You know work yeah. work your way through them. You know yeah, and. I agree. and and that, that kind of gives you that overview. And so you can do that with so many different topics too. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if you show that you're giving that effort and that like you care to your point, like there's nothing that drives me more crazy where someone's like, Hey, if there's a job that opens up at your company, like, let me know that you think I'd be interested in. I'm like, I don't know what you're interested in. Why don't you take the time to look for a job at the website? Here's the, li- let me Google that for you. And then I will help you kind of apply for that job, but I'm not picking out a job for you. Yeah, that's, that's so good, actually. And, and I know we talked a little bit about what we're going to do and, and some of the things that we're going to talk about in this interview, but I'm going to change it up real mm-hmm. quick. Hopefully you're excited about this. So you just gave me an idea. So I think if you were going to reach out, and I did this early in my career, and this is one of the ways that I got into being, uh, to being an SE, so a sales engineer before. I, uh, by then, I'd known what they were. So yeah. I used LinkedIn to do it. But yeah. What some of the things, so this is a good opportunity to, to, to show this, like, so what Aaron just said was, don't, don't just say, hey, I'd love to have a role at Dell, like one, you know, or, or wherever she's working, right? So don't just email her blankly like that, put, put, put a description on it. So not only go out and find maybe the description of what you were looking for, but if you can, if you can start to build a relationship with her or, or bring her of something of value. So just from, just from listening to, to this uh, video right now, if I were going to reach out to you and, and I just watched this video, one of the things that I would do is maybe I would pull one of these security stories about one of these large breaches or something like that. So find, you know, find, find, find something like that. And I would send it to her and make, write a comment on it, you know, and, and give her my thought on it. Like, Hey, you know, this has been this big breach here. And I think these are only going to continue to accelerate. You know, right. I think it's important for, you know, and come up with a couple, couple, couple of thoughts of, of what you think we need to do as a community for security. And, and I guarantee, well, I won't guarantee, I guess, but I would, I would assume that Aaron would be more likely to look at that. And then you, and you know, she answers it or she says, thank you. And then you can follow up and be like, Hey, I'm really passionate about it. I hope, you know, hope right. that comes through like, I'd be interested to, 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 to find this specific role. Yeah. Boom. That's a whole lot easier than, Hey, Hey, I'd like, I'd, I'd like you to help me find a role. Yeah. Agreed. It, again, nothing drives me more nuts than it's like, I have to do the work for you. It, you're already let me know that I don't want to refer you. Right. Cause I want to refer somebody that's going to work hard for what they want um, and show that they're passionate mm-hmm. or, or that they are interested in the topic or many things. So making me do all the work just shows that you're not interested at all. It's just means you're panicking and you're just grabbing at anything. And that just doesn't work for me. Not now. So maybe a while back, but not anymore. All right. So um, I got a couple more questions here and then we'll probably wrap it up, but talked about in your career, you're always kind of learning and looking for the next thing. So what are some of the things that you do or, or, I don't want to call them tips or tricks, but what are some of the things that you do specifically to keep learning, right? Like to, to, to make sure that, Hey, I mean, you mentioned Docker and Kubernetes and some other things and that uh, what are, what are some of the things that you do to kind of kind of find new technology or find new areas to improve? Yeah, I would say um, I'm definitely like a bouncer and that's what somebody called me the other day. Cause I decided to, again, I'm trying to think about my next career or my next step, right? I think a career the way that I look at my career is my entire like life. Uh, my sister is a tax attorney, right? So her career is basically a tax attorney. Um, I think that anybody, and I mean anybody, and this is exactly to that point of you can be working at McDonald's right now and you can go into tech, right? You don't have to have that background. My sister can go into tech. Um, anyone can bounce around. And, and 
I hate that because I initially kept thinking that that word bounce was bad because I was talking to an executive within the company because it's pinging their brain. I was like, where, what's going on with the company? What do you think? You know me. That's another thing that I've kind of also done is like, hey, Thomas, you know me. What do you think I'd be good at? Like, do you know somebody like that sends like this company that you think that that culture would, I could fit into, right? Because, you know, everyone's very unique in their personality and kind of like different. So I definitely think that people can bounce. And for, for me personally, bouncing has been my thing. Like I like it. I like to kind of mix it up and to change it. And it's helped my network because as you can imagine, it's kind of like multiple companies kind of like grown in different experience. And it makes you bring kind of like a different light overall to stuff. So I just always try to think about overall, again, I can't think so many years out, but I guess what I'm trying to do is I realize, hey, I, I probably need to be doing something different in the next couple of years. And maybe I just need to sign up for these classes or these certificates or do some research online yeah. about these other areas that I can go into. Um, and maybe that might be interesting. And I may hate it. Um, it may not be perfect for me at that time, but it's always going to give me, in my mind, a greater sense of, no of knowledge that's going to help me in the long run. Like now I'm in the telco group and the idea of like, once they realize of like, okay, I was like, well, but I don't have a technical background, but they're like, but you have a networking background. <laughs> you do have a technical background. A tel I don't have a telco background. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Too many T's and E's. I don't have a telco background, although I did work at Bay Network. So it's a little bit of, you know, cause Nortel bought them and they did have like phones. And yeah, stuff. they did. That's right. 5G now is not at all what it was like <laughs> back when I was at Nortel. But this idea of like, listen, you have virtualization, you have networking, you have security, right? You know those things and can kind of put them all together and ask the questions and kind of figure it out. And that's, I feel like people have realized that I, I can figure it out. I will figure it out for you, especially now with like the internet and everything that's out there. So I will admit that I'm at that stage where I'm just signed up. I'm starting in January to take some classes in a completely different like realm and a technical realm. It's still focused on products, but and the main goal, it is money out of my pocket. Um, some companies do reimburse you, but this one is not. But a lot of companies are also offering like 0% interest or things along those lines. Right now there's online school that's, you know, giving great deals. Either way, I just want to like try something and see if it's something that I would be interested in, right? And again, giving me that little bit of that knowledge. I have people in that area. I can talk to them about it. I can see, you know, if something pops up down the road or whatever, and what that kind of next step is. But again, it's the idea of like, what do I want? Not necessarily what's the title that I want in my next job, but what's the life that I want to live in my next kind of job um, in my career um, overall. And that's where I'm at right now is just trying to figure that out and what fits with my lifestyle and what I need, you know, overall, it's just to be happy. Yeah, no, I think, uh, I, I think, you know, I look at it as like progression, right? Like, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, and, and, it, and it's interesting that you, that, that you're saying that you don't, you know, you're, you're not good at the five and, you know, five-year planning or down the road, but you're, you're, you're starting to invest now, you know, in, in, into, into whatever those plans are. So I think, you yeah. know, I think it's. I also try to like do it though, in a way of like, I may not go into that path, but I also know that that, that is going to help me do my job better. Right. And trying to look at it as like, what makes you a better person? And may, it may not be just because I'm marketing, I'm not taking the marketing classes, right? I'm trying to take things that are going to make me better overall, not only necessarily like in my role, but as a bigger kind of scope of like moving forward. Because sometimes someone will come to you and saying, hey, we think this would be a really great opportunity. Would you come join us, come to our company and kind of try that out, right? And you don't even know, like you don't even know that they're looking at yeah. you or anything like along those lines, which is why, you know, you and I talked about this, about like videos, right? If someone's Googling something and then they see my name and then they go to my YouTube channel, go to my LinkedIn to your point and see my interviews or see those things. And they're like, well, that's interesting. And I like how she said that or whatever. I don't know. Maybe they hate me, but the idea is, <laughs> they know, and then it would be like, well, that's kind of like interesting. So there's no harm in it. Um, yeah. overall. There's, there's, you really have nothing to lose. I always feel like. Yeah, no, I, I like that. So as we wrap up, 
um, where can folks get in touch with you? So you talked about your blog, your LinkedIn. What, how, how do you want people to send all these requests uh, yeah. for, to help you find a job? Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm on Twitter and I'm on it like daily. So uh, my Twitter account's Banks EK. So B A N K S E K. And that's basically what I use. But I have a blog I hadn't used in a while. Um, you know, got a little crazy with the uh, jobs for, for a little bit. I'm trying to get back into it. Um, so I just kind of posted one, you know, trying to, you know, I'll put it in the show notes. No worries. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll put it in the show notes and folks can find All right. But anyways, Twitter's the best way. Thanks, CK. Twitter. All right. Well, thanks again, Banks, for having us on. Any final thoughts for the audience? No, just thank you so much. Have a happy, happy, um, 2021. Huh. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again. And I will see everybody again on the next episode of Big Data, Big Questions. Bye.